Um, any American who's had to spend a great deal of time in Canada will note that there's a kind of disgusting passive-aggressive anti-Americanism, which is more just sort of nitpicking and irritating um, than dangerous. Certainly it isn't dangerous, but it's this judgmentalism that Canadians have towards Americans. Americans do everything wrong, according to some Canadians. Um, and of course there's a reason for this, because, you know, at least as far as English Canadians go, um, seminal to the creation of Canada as a country was a large influx of United Empire loyalists from the United States who in 1776 said, we're out of here, this is crazy, we go to Canada. The reverse happened, of course. There were probably more people <laughs> heading south than heading north, but that, you know, ca Canadian history kind of glosses over this. Um, but, you know, they were just the people that sort of thought, okay, this is anarchy. Things might not, might, have, might not have been great under the British, but where things are going now is crazy. That attitude I can understand, but that morphing into this kind of foul, um, self, uh, self-centered or smug, oh dear, smug, uh, anti-Americanism, which you see among some Canadians, is not, is one of the less laudable outgrowths of that bit of Canadian history. It doesn't follow that just because you don't like the way things are done in one place, that you don't like everything that the people do in that place. I often find myself sort of explaining to Americans, look, we're not all like this up here, and you know, we generally get along fine with Americans, and we don't think that you're idiots just by being Americans, but there is a presence of that here, and it's noticeable. Um, seceding from the United States does not automatically mean you become anti-American is the point I'm trying to make. And I think that a lot of Canadians don't really have that clear in their head. Um, not wanting to live the way the Americans live is not the same thing as disliking them because they live that way, or even condemning them for it. Now, that's an interesting point of view, especially when you consider you know, the number of people in any given society that actually talk about things like you know, the will to power, or Nietzsche, or, you know, any of this stuff, Schopenhauer, uh, any philosopher out there. Very few people bother with this sort of thing. Um, and you do eventually, sort of, if you think a lot like this, like I do, I almost never stop thinking like this, a sort of barrier, or at least a demarcation line, appears between you and the rest of humanity as you see it. There are those of us who actually live what Socrates would call the examined life, or we think we do, <laughs> um, and uh, or tell ourselves we do, and we think that there are those who do not live an examined life. They just sort of drift through life, and they take things as things come at them. The Walmart McDonald's Society. You're hungry, you go to McDonald's. You want to buy some piece of junk, you go to Walmart. Um, notice the slight slightly disparaging uh, uh, you know, implication and you want a piece of junk, you go to Walmart. Guess where I was yesterday. <laughs> um, so seceding from the herd uh, does not automatically mean that you dislike the herd or even look down on it. This, I think, is a, a very important idea because like and dislike are attachments. Um, if you don't like the herd, then just secede and forget about it. Um, don't, 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 don't berate the herd for being what it is, because that's an attachment too. This is what you know the theory of negative and positive attachments mean, uh, or in my opinion, um, if you hate something, you're just as attached to it as if you love it. How about just you just let it go its own way? Um, and one of the interesting things is, uh, I think that the modern usage of the term has come to us from Nietzsche. And um, his background was, of course, classics, and he spoke ancient Greek and all its various dialects fluently, apparently. And he would have looked at um, the number of terms that the Greeks had for the herd. Hmm. Um, the Spartans, for example, had the Agilai. Uh, or an Agilaen, which was a group of noble boys who were grouped together, sent off into the wilderness to be trained to be proficient Spartans. Uh, they were called Agilai, herds, herds of aristocratic young Spartans. 
So that wouldn't have had um, a pejorative in Doric Greek. It wouldn't have meant that the herd is something stupid. It's just, you know, we have um, we have groups of people that are identifiable one group from the other. That's the way the ancient Greeks would have seen it. Um, if they if they wanted to use a disparaging term for the herd, they would have. I would assume they would use the word ochlos, which means mob. Um, democracy was often called ochlocracy by the Spartans, uh, rule by the mob, as opposed to rule by the people who are fit to rule, who can govern their passions. Um, and <clears throat> what I would posit is the view that we've sort of picked something up along the way that um, I guess just deliberately running counter to the utilitarian currents in our society um, a sort of pseudo elitism that's you know sneaks into any sort of philoso geekish kind of person because in many cases we haven't been expelled from the herd we've walked away from it um, in my case that's certainly the case I just sort of I, I don't understand how the herd operates I don't understand how it gets utility out of such a structured life um, but they apparently do now some people of a self-reflective bent have, you know, in my opinion can't handle that fact that the, the herd might be perfectly content being exactly what it is um, well-fed beast of burden type thing um, why why should that bother us if the herd is happy with its nine to five and its church on Sunday and its God and country stuff and um, Walmart and drive through at the coffee shop on the way to work and all the little rituals that everybody goes through and careful attention to the fashions of the day and uh, that kind of thing uh, the rites of passage in society um, if that actually means something to these people why should we dislike them for it I'm not saying that everybody does, by the way. Um, and it, you know, when when Nietzsche says, "If you want comfort and a secure life, then believe. If you want uh, to know what's going on around you, then inquire." I don't really see that it's inherent in that that one is superior to the other. If you're happy being asleep, why is it incumbent upon me for to damn you for the fact that you're sleeping? Why is it? Why does it follow that I dislike you because you you've chosen not to look at things? Why is it that I dislike you because you've chosen to chew on that steak and say ignorance is bliss? Um, you know, I don't, I don't see that that are, the one actually follows from the other, and I think that it's a dangerous snare. Um, miso or misageilini. Ah, I invented this word today, although I may not have. Somebody might have done it as well, but uh, misageilinismos. <laughs> Uh, hatred or dislike of the herd. Sh you know, terms like sheeple. Why should we feel that way? I, n I can understand, as I say, I can understand how the dislike of the American Revolution morphed into kind of a sickening anti-Americanism, anti-American subcurrent in Canadian thinking. Even though it doesn't logically follow the one to the other. I don't like it here, therefore I'm going over there. I'm happier here than I was over there. I forget about what's over there. But a lot of Canadians can't forget about what's over there, and they've decided that they're just going to you know, throw little barbs uh, constantly at Americans for being Americans. Um, same thing about people who have seceded from the herd. Um, I can see how... You might have seceded, you might have left in utter disgust, and the disgust doesn't leave you even when you've left the herd. Although it's entirely possible that you haven't left the herd. <laughs> As I said, this sort of um, attraction and repulsion are two polarities of the same phenomenon. Um, if you dislike the herd simply for being what it is, then you are you're not really as apart from the herd as somebody who simply lets the herd go its own way with complete indifference. Um, and I, I guess I just wanted to clarify that. Um, it, just because you understand that you're fundamentally different from everybody else, it doesn't follow that everybody else is wrong and you are right. Um, it's just that this is in my nature and 
it's in that person's nature, probably, by all appearances, to gain utility out of the great illusion that is the postmodern world. Maybe they're happy here in this cocoon that we've woven around ourselves, this sort of hyper-reality that we've constructed as a shield between ourselves and phenomenal reality. Good for them. It doesn't work for me. Um, it never has. I've never really attempted to fit in in my life. Um, well, no, that's not true, but whenever I've attempted, I've failed miserably and decided that I wasn't going to bother anymore, I'll put it that way. Um, so I think that it's it's safe and non-elitist to use the term herd, provided it gets used in a way that doesn't um, have the, I guess, corrupting influence of becoming sort of backhandedly or left-handedly attached to it. Um, just let it go its own way. What has it got to do with you? And I think that this is something I'm attempting to cultivate, but you know, when you have when you have a head as swollen as mine is, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, but at least you know there's a recognition that there's an issue there that has to be dealt with. The fact that you know me walking down the street feeling superior to everybody um, is it necessary to me to feel superior to everyone? Is there something in me that wants to feel superior to everyone? Uh, I really have to be careful when reading Nietzsche to avoid that kind of thing. And it's it's not I'm not avoiding that on moral grounds. I'm just sort of saying that if I want out of society, I want out. Um, needing society there as a target for me to throw mud at, I'm not quite sure that I've actually seceded. Um, and I... <sighs> hating society is not the same thing as seceding from it. Um... And even seceding from it isn't the same thing as trying to completely break from it. When I talk about secession, I talk about up here, where society's ways and values are not mine, um, although I don't oppose them. Um, I'd like to influence them in such a way as to prevent them from affecting me, but that's about it. Um, so is the whole idea of the herd inherently elitist? and those who are separate from the herd. I don't think so. It's just human tendencies. Some people are comfortable in there, some people are not. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that that was clear, um, that my usage of the term herd, which could be considered hateful or elitist or arrogant or whatever, um, is not the way I mean it. Uh, I'm not going to say that my own personal arrogance isn't going to sneak into everything, uh, but I would like to think at least that I recognize uh, for my own good, the fact that, okay, Andy, it's okay to sort of step out of the crowd, but you don't have to throw rocks at it after you've walked away from it. That's the only point, I guess, that, that I would like to um, warn against, I suppose, and if, you know, in a way I'm warning myself against it. Um, the, the United Empire loyalist who spends his entire, the, the, the whole rest of his life railing against the, the you know, red revolutionaries who've taken control of his homeland down in the United States now, when it used to be good old British North America, um, he hasn't really left the United States, has he? He's more or less hasn't faced the fact that Americans have changed their minds over the way they want to be governed, and he can't accept it. I would say that a real secessionist, a real person who has sort of said, all right, I, uh, the way the Americans are starting to do things, the way my fellow Americans are starting to do things doesn't suit me anymore, so I'm going to this place where I can live the way I've always lived. It's their business how they want to live now, nothing to do with me. That, to me, is a lot saner. Uh, this has been quite a ramble to make a fairly simple point, but it's a uh, Sunday morning. <laughs>